Good afternoon and welcome to the 2020 Brown University Veterans Day Ceremony. My name is Kimberly Millette and I serve as the Program Director for the Office of Military Affiliated Students and I'm honored to be today's Master of Ceremony. It is a great privilege to serve the military affiliated community at Brown and although we are not able to celebrate this special day in person, I would like to personally thank each and every veteran joining us for their service and sacrifice to our nation. At this time, I would like to introduce Reverend Janet Cooper Nelson to lead the invocation. On this Veterans Day, we who gather, O oh God, seek to honor all those whose lives are given in the service of this beloved nation. And we ask of you a careful heart, an attentive mind, a compassionate memory. Help us to be truly grateful for each life given in loyalty to the best purposes of our country. Take to our hearts the many paths that each of these, our veterans, neighbors, friends, sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, fathers, and mothers, each walked to accomplish their service to us and for this grateful nation. In each circle of love, where a place now stands empty because of the death of each of these, we seek a special honor. May we in care and sincerity act always to express our true concern and deep appreciation for their priceless gift. Remember each of these, O oh God, and cause us to honor them with memory, respect, and action. Rededicate our nation to its founding principles of liberty, human dig dignity, equality, justice, and a welcome to all who seek to live peacefully, dedicated to these shining ideas. Receive our thanks for all who serve, especially for our dear Brunonians who gave their lives for their nation. May they and their service and the grief of their families and loved ones be in our hearts always, and may we be ever true. So help us, God. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. Our first speaker has had a long career in development, alumni relations, fundraising, and higher education. A member of Brown's class of 1972, a proud parent of two Brown graduates, and a 2019 Brown Honorary Doctorate recipient, Joan Wernig Swarnson has volunteered her expertise to the university for more than 45 years. Joan has also been a strong advocate for Brown's military-affiliated community, particularly our student veterans. It is my pleasure to introduce Joan as our first speaker of today's ceremony. Good afternoon. I am Joan Sorensen, Brown Class of 1972. My husband, Paul Pablo Sorensen, who is Class of 1971, spent nine years at Brown earning four degrees. Our two children are Brown graduates, Class of 2006. Thank you all for joining us today. It is truly an honor to be here for this very special event to honor the veterans of Brown University on this Veterans Day, November 11th, 2020. Over a span of almost 50 years, I have been fortunate to serve Brown in numerous volunteer positions, both within my class and across the university. Currently, I am a fellow of the corporation and a co-chair of the Brown Together campaign, along with serving on the Library Advisory Council and the Kearney Institute for Brain Science Advisory Council. I take great pride in being a member of the Brown community. Throughout my years of volunteering, I am most proud of the strides we have taken together to support our student veterans. Veterans' causes are near and dear to my heart. My father, who sent four of his six children to Brown, served in World War II. And after 25 years of service to our country, he retired as a commander in the United States Coast Guard. 
our son, uh, after graduating from Brown, enlisted in the United States Air Force, serving overseas in numerous locations. Over the years, my husband and I have encouraged the university to extend its support of veterans. We have worked alongside university leadership to ensure that our returning veterans are provided the financial resources to thrive on campus. I personally support the university's veterans initiative, which guarantees that future student veterans will enjoy the same formative experience at Brown that my husband Pablo, my children and I enjoyed. I am proud of what this university represents and the lengths the current administration has gone to make this a desirable home for veterans. The broader Brown community is taking notice of these efforts and people from all parts of the Brown University world are joining in this effort. I hope you enjoyed today's ceremony and that you will join me in supporting these inspiring young men and women in any way you can. Now it is my pleasure to introduce our 19th president, a woman who has been a true champion for veterans at Brown during her almost nine years at the university, Christina Paxson. Good afternoon and thank you for being here today as we honor the service of Brown University veterans. I first wanna thank my friend Joan Sorensen for her introduction and especially for her unwavering support of student veterans. I also want to thank Kimberly Millett, our Director of our Office of Military Affiliated Students, who organized today's ceremony. In a typical year to mark Veterans Day, we would be gathering as a community near Soldier's Arch, the most prominent campus marker honoring the men and women of Brown who've served in the armed forces. Now, as we know, nearly all of our traditions look different this year. While we can't be together in person today, we have ensured that wreaths and flags demonstrating our gratitude for our veterans are still on display, both at Soldier's Arch and on the College Green. It's important that we keep that tradition alive. It, it symbolizes the fact that our commitment to honor our veterans is ongoing. We recognize our veterans in a special way today, but we also have a continued commitment to understand their diverse experiences and embrace them as members of the Brown community. Our student veterans enrich this campus in so many ways, academically, culturally, socially. Beyond what they add to our understanding of a global world, their presence at Brown aligns with our mission to advance knowledge and to serve society. Increasingly, Brown has become a home to student veterans earning college degrees. And it's essential to expand support and create new pathways, both to honor their service and to enhance the education of every student who benefits from the unique lived experiences and perspectives that our veterans contribute. I am so proud, and we are all extremely proud, of our 27 student veterans they are incredible additions to our community, not only for what they've already accomplished in their military careers, but for what they hope to accomplish in their professional careers and as global citizens. As we increase the number of student veterans at Brown, we strengthen the fabric of our community. Last year on Veterans Day, we announced a new initiative to more than double the number of U.S. military veterans enrolled as undergraduates, and we are going to do this over five years. We're doing this in a number of ways, making standardized test scores optional and considering applications on a need-blind basis for all undergraduate applicants with U.S. military service. We're also strengthening our recruiting efforts, and we're increasing financial aid for student veterans. Now, I am so thrilled that once again, we have more, more good news to share in support of our commitment to our student veterans. And this is all thanks to the incredible generosity of Joe Healy. Joe is a U.S. Army veteran and the proud, proud parent of two Brown University students. Uh, he and his family have made a $20 million gift to support scholarships for veterans and resumed undergraduate education students. Now, if you talk to Joe, one theme you'll certainly hear is the importance of paying it forward. 
Joe believes strongly in the value of service to others and service to the country. And he also wants to ensure that a Brown education is accessible to students from all backgrounds. And in just a few moments, you'll hear Joe explain why it was so important to him to make this gift at this time. Now, we all know this has been a challenging year for the Brown community for so many reasons. And to see such incredible generosity at this time is truly inspiring. This gift will help to ensure that Brown will be home to even more men and women who have served our country. So in closing to our veterans, please know it's an honor and privilege to have you here at Brown. We owe an immense debt of gratitude to you for the tremendous sacrifices you've made and the courage you display as you defend our freedoms. Thank you. Good afternoon. It's an honor to be here with all of you today to commemorate Veterans Day. I want to begin by recognizing all those among us, particularly those in the Brown community who are members of the U.S. military, our veterans, our active duty service members, guardsmen and reservists. This day is about honoring and celebrating our veterans for their selflessness and courage. Veterans Day looks a lot different this year, but I find it's important that we always take the time to honor our veterans. I want to thank President Paxson and the entire Brown University community for ensuring that this important ceremony would still take place virtually. As President Paxson said, I'm a veteran, and this day holds a special meaning for me, for my family, and for everyone I stood with as I served my country. I'm also extremely proud to be here today and to announce and celebrate the gift that my family and I have made to Brown University to establish a scholarship fund for student veterans and resumed undergraduate education students. While I didn't attend Brown, this university has had an incredible impact on my life and the life of my family. My son and daughter are currently students at Brown, and my mom, who resumed her education later in life, graduated from Brown in 1980. In many ways, this gift encapsulates two of the most important aspects of my life. The first is service to my country, and the second is education, specifically the doors that have been opened to my family through education. More than 40 years ago, Brown took a chance on my mom, Tonya. She was raising my brother and me in Warwick, Rhode Island, as a single parent. And through a series of unfortunate circumstances in her life, she ended up unemployed. She decided she had to go back to school. She was admitted to Brown in 1976, and she was on welfare, and she wasn't able to drive. So she took a RIPTA bus from Warwick to Providence every day for four years to earn her degree in independent studies. That degree paved a path for her to start a new psychiatric nursing career that included using poetry as a therapy for coping with trauma. I saw the power in what Brown was able to offer my mom, who showed me what it means to be a fighter and a survivor. I also had the great experience of spending time on Brown's campus as a young boy, where I gained an important mentor in a Brown student who I came to see as my big brother. Fast forward about six years and I'm thinking about college. Again, coming from a single parent household, finances were tough, even with financial aid packages. My family had a proud history of military service and I knew that the military could help financially with my education. Thankfully, I applied for and was awarded an Army ROTC four-year scholarship. I earned a degree in biomedical engineering from Boston University and then served in the U.S. Army Medical Corps at Walter Reed Army Medical Center in Washington, D.C. Now that's a far cry from what I do today in the world of finance in New York City, but the years I spent in the military instilled in me an enormous respect for the armed forces. Those years taught me invaluable lessons about discipline, honor, 
service, and camaraderie that remain with me every day. At my core, I believe that service to your country is truly one of the highest callings that there is. That's why it's so important that we honor our veterans today and always. I owe my success to my mom and the example that she set for me. And I've witnessed firsthand through multiple generations the power of a Brown education. I also owe my success to the military, which made my education possible. Through this gift, I am merging the most pivotal influences in my life. Never in my wildest dreams did I imagine I'd see the success of my professional career. And I'm a big believer that we have a duty to appreciate what we have in life and pay it forward. I know what it's like to not be able to afford higher education. And unfortunately, given the pandemic, more and more families are struggling financially. My hope is that this gift will open the doors of higher education to student veterans and students exploring education later in life who didn't think a Brown education was even possible. I'm here today because of those who believed in me and those who believed in my mom. I want to give someone else the chance that I had. I can't think of a more fitting time to announce this gift than Veterans Day. So again, to all the members of the military, thank you for your service. And to everyone at Brown, thank you for all that you do to prepare the next generation of leaders. Thank you, Joe, for your remarks and for joining us today to honor our veterans. Your generous gift will positively impact the lives of current and future Brown veterans for many years to come, and we thank you sincerely. For concluding remarks, I would like to welcome student veteran Alec Kinchevsky. Alec is a fourth-year student at Alpert Medical School, where he serves as the student body president for all Brown medical students. Alex served from 2006 to 2014 as a commissioned officer in the active duty army and received a Bronze Star Medal for his meritorious service in Baghdad, Iraq. It is my honor to introduce Alec as the final speaker of today's ceremony. Greetings. My name is Alec Kinchewski and I have the honor of being your student speaker today. I would like to say thank you to Kimberly Millette from the Office of Military Affiliated Students for giving me this opportunity and to y'all for giving me your attention in a couple minutes of your day. To give a little background on myself, I'm a fourth year medical student at the Alpert Medical School as well as the student body president for our 600 odd medical students. Prior to arriving at Brown, I served as a commissioned officer in the active duty army for eight years in various command and staff positions while assigned to South Korea, Kuwait, Germany, Baghdad, and Japan. At the moment, I'm applying into residency in adult psychiatry with a personal mission to address the veteran suicide crisis. Perhaps the most terrifying part of being a veteran is knowing that each day 17 veterans take their own lives, about 1.5 times the general population's rate. While shocking and terrifying, the original statistic in the mid-2010s was 22 a day, so progress is being made. However, we must keep the issue in mind whenever discussing veterans, even during these celebratory occasions. Veterans Day was originally created to mark the end of World War I, the Great War, the war to end all wars. Sadly, this was not to be the case, and each subsequent generation has produced a cohort of veterans who bring a complex set of skills, talents, and needs back home. Often, the military has served as a training ground for our nation's future leaders at the highest levels of government, industry, and academia. Here at Brown, we have served in student leadership positions, alumni organizations, and on the corporation, including Dr. Jeffrey Hines, who the last time I saw had to break from a meeting to answer a call consulting the governor of Georgia on their COVID-19 response. We also all come home changed, and sometimes not for the better. My medical school research has been on homelessness amongst veterans, a problem our country hasn't been able to shake despite incredible efforts by the VA and our communities. From the clinical sphere, my lasting memory from my psychiatry rotation was meeting a formerly homeless veteran in the psych ED. We matched my demographics for age, gender, and everything else you name it, and we had both joined in 2006. It even turned out that we had been in the same meeting in Baghdad back in 2010, me an operations officer coming from Germany and him a general's driver from El Paso, Texas. However, on that fall day in 2020, 
He was on a very dark road of PTSD, polysubstance abuse, and little hope while I was preparing to apply to residency of the best programs in America. At the time when my patient joined the military 14 years earlier, he was a happy and healthy young man. Now, after being found unresponsive in his building, he was begging to go home to take care of his dog, but really mean to take his tranquilizers as he was experiencing the potentially deadly symptoms of withdrawal. During our conversation, I made every imaginable appeal for him to get care as a provider, veteran, and human being, but had no luck. It forced me to reflect on how the military experience can be incredibly enabling for some of us, devastating for others, and most often a little of both. The challenge for our country is figuring out how to both nurture the aspirations and heal the wounds our present and future veterans will bring home. Brown has stepped up to answer both these challenges, being recently recognized by U.S. News and World Report as the third best school for veterans in America. It has received this status through the unprecedented steps of increasing financial aid for student veterans, instituting need blind and test optional admissions policies, and President Paxson's pledge in 2019 to double the number of undergraduate veterans by 2024. Right alongside these administrative steps, Brown has shown that it cares for us. The wonderful team in the Office of Military Affiliated Students has created a vibrant, friendly, and accepting veteran community where we can find the camaraderie that got us through the hard times in the service. Over in my neck of the woods at the medical school, I have received incredible gestures of welcome and acceptance that were backed up by actions, ranging from our admissions department coordinating veteran students and applicants to meet on interview days, to putting a flag in our atrium, and even including military service in the school's diversity statement. Additionally, almost every medical student and resident at Brown rotates or participates in research at the Providence VA Medical Center. The most meaningful thing though, has been having three veteran classmates, the four of us making up 1% of all veterans entering US medical schools in 2017. The part of my service I value the most is knowing that I could count on my buddies and liking to think they could count on me also. I thank God it continues to this day in Providence, Rhode Island. As Brown has embraced veterans as an institution and community, I ask each member of our Brown family to take the next step and actively engage veterans about their service. When you meet a veteran, whether in class or on the streets, please take a moment and ask what branch they were in, where they served, and what was their job in the military. While small gestures, these personal connections mean the world to us and build an environment of being seen and heard in our community. In conclusion, I would like to thank you for taking the time to listen to me today. I value your time and attention, and I hope you have a wonderful Veterans Day. Thank you, Alec. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes today's Veterans Day ceremony. Thank you all for joining us on this day of gratitude and acknowledgement of service and duty. Please continue watching to view a slideshow of our undergraduate student veterans. Thank you.